River San Francisco, uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, we have a speaker that I think um, is going to help all of us in our future. Um, I'd like to introduce Laura Reeves. She's the host of Pure Dog Talk Podcasts. And tonight's, tonight's presentation... We love Pure Dog Talk. We do. We'll be live streamed, so if you've seen all of the equipment outside, that's what's going on here. And it's also going to be available for, for uh, future information. Laura, my new best friend, uh, um, is a retired PHA handler um, that, after 25 years, is showcasing limited string of outstanding dogs. Well, I thought they were. Well, <laughs> I'm reading the script. Yeah. Uh, I read for her, just so you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, many of you know me from the past, but you don't know that I'm a stand-up comedian yeah. <laughs> in my, in my uh, private life. Uh, Sidehounds were actually her primary group of dogs with her initial clientele, and she's worked with Ridgebacks, the Wolfhounds, Ibis and Hounds, and um, you've traveled with... Katie Campbell. With um, it, right. Anybody that knows Katie Campbell and Basenjis, I traveled with Katie for a dozen years, so... 12 screaming Basenjis in a, in yeah. a motorhome, I'm just saying. <laughs> so they don't bark, by golly. So one of the things we want to emphasize is this is a very interactive session. It's going to be very interactive. We have our favorite volunteer here, Timogen, who is going to volunteer his services uh, to work with Laura tonight. However, this is a conversation between our presenter and our audience. And we really hope that you will participate and contribute to the value that we get here this evening. Absolutely. Join in. If you have a question, shout out. If you have a commentary, shout out. I mean, there's lots of people out here who are a whole lot more talented at this <clears throat> than I am. Okay? So I, we want to hear from you. There's a lot of great people out there in Facebook land. Really? Facebook land. Um, so... They are missing. They are definitely missing out. I'm here. To, I'm here to say there is some wicked good dessert over here. Can everybody hear me? How are we on the mic level? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So here's the thing about showing dogs professionally. We run from Chihuahua to Irish Wolfhound in five minutes on a regular basis. This is normal. This isn't normal for you guys, right? So that's not something you have to worry about. You've got your own dog. And, and that is such an advantage. And I think sometimes, getting a lot of static on this, I think sometimes owner handlers don't really appreciate what advantage it is. Because when I come screaming at the Irish Wolfhound ring from the Chihuahua ring, where I've got four pounds on the end of the leash and I have to go to 200 and some odd pounds, okay, that's a huge transition. And it's the same for every professional handler. And so what you guys have as owner handlers is that ability to completely focus on your, on your own teamwork with your dog. And we know that sight hounds are special. Right? Right? Special? Amen. Amen. All right. <coughs> they are special. And they're special across the spectrum of, of sight hounds. You know, I was practicing so I didn't forget anybody, right? Because <laughs> I'm like, okay, Afghan hound, Basenji, Borzoi. I'm, see, I'm checking just to make sure. Cherneko, see, you add things. Then I'm totally screwed up. Greyhound, Ibethan hound, Faro hound, Ridgeback, Slukey, Deerhound, Slugi, <laughs> right? Whippets, Aswax. <laughs> okay, so. I didn't say, how did I not say, uh, they're on the list, they're right here, Irish Wolfhounds. And Scottish Deerhounds. And Scottish Deerhounds, also on the list. I got Whippets, I said Whippets. Okay, so what I'm saying is, even with inside hounds, right, so we have a pretty good spectrum, even with inside hounds, that have very specific needs. A Ridgeback and a Basenji, you've got to see wrinkle. Okay, I want ears. Borzoi, I don't want ears. <laughs> right? Okay. So there's very, very specific differences that you guys have within your own breeds and as professional handlers that we should and need to know. But the most important thing I want you to come away with from tonight is to not try and take your Saluki or your Irish Wolfhound and turn it into a Doberman. Okay? A, you can't do it. 
This is not a throw down the gauntlet, I'm saying, can't be done. And B, it's not right, okay? Temperament is part of breed type. If I have a Saluki that stands up with its ears flying and its tail wagging at the end of a six foot leash while I'm throwing bait at it, that's not a Saluki. Am I wrong? Okay, may I have an amen on this? Amen. Breed specific presentation is critical. Know what your breed is, love what your breed is, appreciate what your breed is, showcase what your breed is. Don't try to be something you're not. Sighthounds are special. They are unique, they are ancient, they are sensitive, they are touchy, they are many, 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 many things. Appreciate them for what they are and showcase the best of your dog and if that means you're standing in the group ring with an Irish wolfhound that's like, okay, that's what he is. That's who he is. Don't, don't be trying to do this big old free stack. Stand up with your dog and say, it's the tallest dog in the ring, comes up to my boobies. Okay? <laughs> that's what an Irish wolfhound is. Am I, okay? <coughs> All right, amen. This is like, this turning turn into a prayer meeting. Never mind a conversation, we're having a prayer meeting. Yeah. 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 Prayer prayer meeting. <laughs> okay, so, so with that, so with that, we're going to go and we're going to talk about some very specific things that you guys can do. You are owner handlers, you are breeders, you are whoever you are working with in your specific breeds. Can I get a quick poll? Say, so like quick, 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 quick. Um, Salukis, everybody? Yeah. All Saluki people? Yeah. Okay, there's, these are Borzoi people. Okay, greyhounds. greyhounds, okay, good, whip it, um, so, and I know I've got extras out there. So we're going to really kind of try and pay attention, but there's some really commonalities between the sight hounds, so that when I come from my chihuahua, or my mastiff, to my whip it, okay, so that's all about how we present ourselves with our dogs. So, number one, pretty hands. We do a lot of talking with our hands. It's almost like sign language, yeah? I want to show things to the judge. What do I want to show the judge? I definitely do not want to take my hand and put it back here on its really crappy rear end, <laughs> right? Okay? Right. We're going to use these hands, and we're going to use these like a frame. And we frame the things we want people to see, not the things we don't want people to see. Does that make sense? And we want to frame them in a pretty manner. So when I'm showing a St. Bernard that can put all 200 and some odd pounds of its head in its collar, and I'm going, and it's like a deadlift at the Olympics, <laughs> that's a really different appearance than when I have my whip it. Right? right? Okay. So that's very important. What do you say with your hands? How do you use your hands? Pinky swear. Right? Or your pinky when you pick up your teacup. Yeah? Okay. So that's all about elegance. Sighthounds, if they are anything, are about elegance. Even an Irish wolfhound. All of the sighthounds, they are elegant in motion and or standing. Pick one from the largest to the smallest. They are about elegance. And so when we show this breed, we have to be about elegance. We have to give that same presentation. So if we're bobbling with our collar, going crap, dropping the leash, okay, that's not elegant, is it? Okay. So here, may I? Come here, darling. And so one of the things that I think is so, 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 so important when we're working with our sighthounds, come here, son. Who is this and why are you touching me? Which is why... Good. Well <laughs> done, buddy. Okay, so when we touch our sight hounds, one of the things that we want to be really careful about is that we never take our hands off them, really. Right? There's no... Come here, son. There he's a good man. Give him your best side, baby. So when you're stacking a dog, okay, first of all, I'm not, like, choking up on this dog, right? Just gently hand underneath the collar, very gently, and I'm never really going to take my hand off this dog. This dog, when I go to stack it, this dog's never met me. Here you go, son. Good job. And I'm just going to keep my hand on that dog. 
all the way along. Okay? Boom. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And there's your presentation. And with your Saluki, and with a lot of your sight hounds, get your head. I know. Piss me off, he says. Get off me. Right? And if and if he says, don't put your thumb on my nose, don't put your thumb on his nose, man. Right? Don't fight with him about it. You're going to lose. This is the thing about a sight hound. If you fight with them, you will lose. Guaranteed. They will fling themselves down on the ground and be like, ah, done. Over it. Okay, thank you. So, so I think that's really important. Okay, What we say with our hands, where we put our hands, how we put our hands, when you hold the collar, when you hold the chin, everything is gentle. It's about the curves. It's about keeping your hand. If you go and you're like, <laughs> at a sight hound, they're like, Get off me! What? What? Get get off me! I was just wrong. They don't like that. They don't. They don't like jittery. So if you're nervous, this is one of those places where being nervous is the worst possible thing you can possibly do. Sighthounds are like, weird, weird vibe. I'm out. Okay? <laughs> right? Am I right? Okay. Right. So, so here's another amen moment. If you are ever going to be confident in your life, when you do it is in the ring with the sight hound. Because every dog takes their confidence from us. I mean, that's a fact. Every single breed I have ever shown, from Chihuahua to Mastiff, takes their confidence from me. Fact. I have more than I need, so it's okay. <laughs> you guys can, can add some. Because that's where your dog's going to get it. But sighthounds really need it. They need your confidence. They need your strength. They need your calm. <coughs> so what are you there for? You are there for your dog. You are not there for your glory or your ribbons or who you're trying to impress. You're there for your dog. What does your dog need? Give your dog what it needs. It needs your confidence and your focus. Exactly. exactly. Her comment. Right. Her comment, and in case anybody couldn't hear it, and is very, 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 very on point. It's stupid for me to be scared. This is my hobby. I'm supposed to be here having fun. Okay. Guess what, people? This is not world peace. No world peace. It's not real life. It's not real life. It's a game. You're having fun, and you're here having fun with your dog. Okay. I get it. You want to win. We all want to win. But what is the point of making your dog be miserable so that you can take home a ribbon? Make your dog happy and you will take home the ribbon. That's how that works. And it is particularly so inside house. And that is across the board. Pick one from the littlest to the biggest. Um, <coughs> so I think that, <coughs> pardon me. I'm just A, trying to read my script, and B, trying to get the frog out of my throat. <laughs> script, psh, more like notes. Um, so I really think that, that what we need to pay attention to with our hands is talking with our hands. I like to say that we talk with our hands just like we're talking with sign language. Point to your dog's pretty face. Point to your dog's pretty shoulders. Kind of gradually, you know, run your hand down its top line. P know what's good about your dog. Number one, okay, you got to know that part first. Read your standard, know what's good about your dog, and point that part out. And if your dog has a terrible rear end, don't ever look at it. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Please do not spend 20 minutes trying to reset it. Because all that's doing is telling the judge, hey, look, terrible rear end over here. Hey, we didn't, no, no. There's a lot of, um, I'm not going to say sleight of hand. Because that would be wrong, but kind of. There's a lot of magician to, to showing your dogs. There's a lot of pay attention over here, don't look at this thing over here, don't look behind the curtain. Right? So this is what your hands are. When they talk about sleight of hand, that's what they're talking about. Right? Your hands, hi, over here, hello. And that movement, that gracefulness, that gentleness, 
A gives your dog confidence, B jaws the judge's eye, and C is just pretty. And it's so important that you bring that for your dog because they didn't ask to be here. You drug them here. They're like, hey, dude, we're going to go do something fun. And then you drag them in the ring and you're like, you bad beast. You didn't do it what I wanted to. Okay, what's fun about that? Okay? These guys, it's so important that they understand that, that they're actually doing something with you. They kind of don't care, really. You know, at some level, they're sight hounds. They're like, what up? But if you're going to make them do it and, and ask them to do it, they should at least have a good time, right? All right. So that's about the hands. That's about the confidence. <sighs> Moving. Moving. Think about sight hounds. Every one of those dogs on that list, what should they do? Somebody speak to me. What should they do? Bingo. Who said float? You win a prize right there. Float. Every single one of these dogs floats. They may or may not be a trotting breed. They Ridgebacks are a trotting breed, okay? They may be a galloping breed, like Salukis, like Whippets. But they should still be effortless when they move. Now, hi, nothing here says um, Saluki about this body. But you've got to make it look effortless. If it kills you, you have to make it look good, right? So if you're kind of like... <laughs> going around the ring, that's what your dog is going to look like too, okay? So, to move beautifully with your sight hound, drive from your hips, lower your center of gravity. I'm not saying run with bended knee, for God's sake. I'm saying lower your center of gravity, relax your lower body, and drive from your hips. Take long strides. You're floating with your dog. Okay, so if you're either lumbering or worse, short striding. <laughs> yeah, what do you think your dog's doing? Because our, right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Our dogs don't speak English. Did anybody know that? <laughs> okay, no, no, no. They read body language and they read tone. They don't understand run, heel. They don't understand any of that. They understand your body language and your tone of voice. And if your body language is <laughs> guess what theirs is? <laughs> when they're supposed to be whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay? Anybody here cross country ski? Come on, people, you're killing me. You have desert dogs and you don't cross country ski. I don't understand what that's about. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is if you've ever watched cross-country skiing on TV while you were sitting in your, in your Bedouin tent, <laughs> okay, cross-country skiing, that movement, whoosh, 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 that's a float, yeah? Right? You understand what I'm saying? You're not lifting your feet all the way up off the ground. You're not making a big pretty pony production, okay? Okay. You are lowering your center of gravity, and you will float with your dog. And the more that you are able to float, the more that they are able to float. Super important. They will mimic your stride. If your stride is small, their stride will be small. If your stride is large, their stride will be large. That is a fact. Okay. Very, very, very important on the movement piece. Okay, so the second thing, very important on this one. One, two, three, <laughs> right? Go. Not, hey, let's run! <laughs> okay, so what happens when you do that? What happens when you, like, run? What happens? Somebody tell me. Throws the gate off, throws the dog off. They're not collected. Horse people? Come on, there's got to be horse people here. Okay, collection. We understand collection? Dogs need it too. People need it too. So in order to get collected movement to actually showcase to the judge what your dog actually can do, you have to get them all together. And if you just go run, they're not together. They're just kind of like, whoa, what happened here? One, two, three, zoop. 
When you drive a car, when you drive a car, you put your foot on the gas, do you go <laughs> Okay, Phil, not you. <laughs> I'm saying Phil Allen out there, yeah, he does. But but <laughs> but that is not our goal, man. <laughs> our goal is proper acceleration. <laughs> like, yes. Okay, courtesy turn. You know, personally I find it a time waster. Kind of depends on the dog. Okay, this is a great question. Courtesy turns. Big dogs, little dogs, it's all kind of different. So I've got a Rhodesian Ridgeback that paces like a son of a gun. I'm doing a great big giant courtesy turn, clear behind the judge, outside the ring, and then I'm like, wee, and I'm lifting him up. And so that by the time I pass the judge's shoulder, the dog's like, you know, trotting instead of like, <laughs> like, like an octopus on speed. Okay? So, fine. If I've got a beautifully trained dog that knows how to, <laughs> P.S., knows how to walk in a leash, can we talk about train your dogs, people? It's like a whole nother thing. It's like a whole nother seminar. We'd have to have a whole nother seminar to talk about train your dogs. Train them to walk on a leash. I, 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 I ring stewarded today and I'm like, there's 50 some odd dogs here. I think three of them know how to walk on a leash. <laughs> train your dogs. It's not hard, okay? I understand they're sight hounds and we have to like coddle them a little bit. You can still tap them with the collar and say, no, you don't have to drag me around like a kite. Okay? Teach them kindness. Teach them to walk kindly on a leash. There is no excuse for an Irish wolfhound or a Rhodesian Ridgeback dragging me along like I'm a kite. It's not okay. You know, I don't care when how old they are. They're eight weeks old, they go on a kennel lead, and you walk them around and you follow them. You follow the dog. Like, the dog is in charge. What a concept, right? And you say, hey, hey, puppy, 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 puppy. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. I can come with you. And then you follow them some more. And pretty soon, like, hey, I want to go where she is because she has cookies. And it's way cooler than this stupid leaf over here. Right? That's how we teach dogs to walk on a leash. And if you teach them to do that at eight, nine, ten weeks old, guess what? <laughs> when you get to six months old and you walk in the ling, it, they're not going to fling themselves on down on the ground and say, I can't possibly know. No, I don't possibly know how to do that. Okay? Right? All right. So teach your dog to walk on a leash. Teach you to walk nicely on a leash. One, two, three. Very important. One, two, three, go. I also showed you one, two, three, four, five. Did you guys catch the one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five is very important. I'm going to show you one more time for people that weren't watching. Because when we stack our dogs, there's lots of numbers here. You didn't know this was a math class, did you? Okay. Okay. No. All right. Now, dude, sweetheart, I understand. And again, when we move a sighthound's body position, we're not just yanking them around. We're convincing them that it's okay to move over here. Right? So again, keep the hands on the dog. Gentle hand. So, one, we number them. This is one. One. Keep the hand on the dog. Two. Three. Okay, you watching? Four. Change hands with four. Yeah? Five. That's five. I always want to do the show side first because that's what the judge sees. <laughs> when you walk a dog up into your stack, teach it to walk up to your hand. Not with food, just this is your target. This is where you walk to. So that when they walk up, I know, it's just <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Get off me. Here, mooch. Come on, Bubba. And also, don't ever, please, dear baby Jesus, don't ever just like lift your dog up in the middle of its back. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Just walk it in a circle. Please, I beg of you. <laughs> I beg. Okay? Walk it in a circle. Come on, bub. Bub, bub, bub. Bub, bub, bub. Look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My dog. It's okay. He doesn't have to bait. All he has to do is look. This is a target. He walked to the target. Now, we look at where Muj is. He's got like two feet to fix, right? There it is. And always move the forward front leg back, not the back front leg forward. Where they stop is where they're comfortable. That's their anchor. 
So if one foot has gone further forward, move that foot back. That will assure, guarantee, that you will always have your dog's front underneath it rather than post out like a, like a rocking horse, right? Okay, there, I have stacked my dog in five seconds or less. I have not reefed his body around at any point because I'm kind of old and I'm a little tilty. But other than that, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> and so if I want to show just a little bit of expression, this is we're back to the hands, and this works with a lot of sight hounds. If I want ears up, I'm just going to stroke a little bit right here, <laughs> right? I'm not. <laughs> Mooj is like, <laughs> I'm over it. Okay, I'm not going to do this big bait down, you know, try and get the arch. I know he's looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay, it's not a Doberman, guys. Sight hound. Show the proper headset. Show the proper shoulder set. Let them put their heads down like they were actually moving on a hunt. Because I guarantee you, their fronts are going to be so much prettier than if you've got their head up and their fronts up here around their ears. Okay? Promise. Promise to heaven. All right. So, speaking of ears. Oh, wait. No, I really do want to talk about this one. Okay. The horse people. Up in their verse, up in their mouth versus on their mouth. You understand what I'm talking about? Get the bit? I'm on the bit versus I'm up in, you know? Okay. We need to have contact with these dogs, even, this, even the sight hounds, even when you give them a dead loose lead, even when you've got your whippet lead down around your shoulders. You still need to have contact. They need to feel that you're there. That's your communication with the dog. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and that's critical, that they be able to feel that connection. Just like when you're riding, the horse feels you in the reins and on the bit. And they might feel you in your seat, they might feel you in the heel, but this is where they know what you're talking about. Okay, same with the dog. They know what you're telling them from what your hand on the leash says. So make sure that you're always in contact with them. In contact does not mean you're strangling them. Okay? That goes back to teach them to walk on the leash. Teach them to walk nicely on the leash. Now, okay, Annie Clark always said, give a poodle a toy, let it carry around. That's how you teach it to walk. Okay, so my so probably my Saluki isn't going to carry a toy in its mouth to have a pretty haired carriage. I get that. But you can teach them to walk with, um, oh, what are those little lure coursing things, right? With the little fluffy part on the end of a whip. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You can teach them to do that. Easy. They just need to not be gagging and dragging. And just a little tap on the leash, just a little contact, as well as get their head at a good spot for them, not clear up here, not on the ground, being like, oh, you're making me do this. This is the most horrible thing. Ah! How many sight hounds did you see doing that today? A dozen? Twelve? Thousand? Yeah, I, okay. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying. So how do we prevent our sight hounds from looking like that? We make it happy. We teach them. We train them. And then we make this be a positive experience for them. So they're not drug out here cold going, what in uh, bloody blue blazes have you done to me? Freaked out because they've never been anywhere and overwhelmed and overstimulated. And they're like, oh, now I have to run in a straight line? Are you kidding me? Okay, that's not cool. That's not nice to your dog. That's just not okay. So contact, stay in contact. One way or the other on the collar, stay in contact. That's very important. Not strangling, not like they're free. Stay in contact. Okay, ears, Salukis. It's not really the biggest thing we worry about in Salukis. Be nice if you can get a little bit. Some breeds, it's huge. Ibiza Hounds. My mentor in Ibiza Hounds was a woman by the name of Sue Fagan, and she's a very, very famous Ibiza Hound breeder. And the very first time I ever met her, she handed me this bitch that had gone best to breed. And my friend Katie had won Basenji's, and she's like, "Here, I won this one too. You get to take this one." I'm like, okay, great. What do we? What do we know about this breed? She's like, "90 percent ears." <laughs> All right. <laughs> That bitch didn't want to use her ears. So you do, you do everything. You're like fling yourself on the ground and like roll on your back to try and get ears, right? Those breeds, pharaoh hounds, you know, Basenjis, Ibethan hounds, those are a big deal. A lot of these breeds, they don't really care. I mean, a little bit of expression is pretty, particularly if you, I think if you have a feathered dog, I think it really kind of frames the face really nice. But again, keep in mind, what is the back skull on your dog? 
Is your back skull on your dog a little heavy? Don't use the ears, people. <laughs> right? Yeah? Okay. So that goes back to know your dog. What do you know about your dog? Does your dog have a stunning headpiece that's all length and, and elegant and gorgeous? Fine, you can get some ears out of it. Your dog got a bucket head? Please don't put its ears up. Just please don't. Okay? <laughs> right? So that's an important thing to know. Now, tails are a whole other thing. Tails, you've got Afghans and Basenjis. You've got to get that tail up. You've got to get that tail up. Oh, it's really important. Salukis, oh, you can hold your own umbrella. <laughs> Somebody actually once told me that about a dog I was showing. That was really cold. <laughs> Okay, so, so how do you get your tail up or your tail down? Those are issues. Tail up is goes back to the happy and the confident, right? Absolutely. Um, do not, do not, do not, do not piss off an Afghan. <laughs> Let me just tell you, this is a bad scene, people. <laughs> right? So you got to keep them happy. Um, Saluki, I really don't want it happy. <laughs> right? Because what happens when a, su a Saluki is super happy? <laughs> and it's up to holding its own umbrella. Or when it thinks it's really cool, right? Like I've, I, the one I showed was just super macho. He's like, yeah. he's walking in like this. He's got his tail up over his head. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm like, no, you're not that cool, dude. <laughs> so, then, so when you have that problem, you need to convince them they're really not that cool. Clearly, without beating them, I'm not s advising that. I'm just saying, no, you're not that cool, buddy. Just <laughs> dial it down a bit. And 90% of the time, it's up here. It's very, 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 very rarely that I see a sight hound that has a tail carriage issue, not a tail set issue, tail carriage issue that isn't in their head. It's not about where it's set. It's up here. 98% of the time. It happens. But you don't very often see a whippet or a greyhound or something with their tail set up here. Okay, it's not the tail set. It's the tail carriage. And that is mental. And so mental... Who's in charge of the mental? Hello, do a little happy dance, right? Because now it's in, in your hands. You can control this. So instead of being mad about it and beating them, right? Say, so, all right, I, I'm in charge. This is, this is in my bailiwick. I can take care of this. And 90% of the time, it's just dialing that dog down, calming it down. It's not checked up. It's not all wound up about bitches or, you know, whatever it is. It's also mostly males. Have you ever noticed that? Boys, close your ears. All you, plug your ears. Come on, cover them up. Come up, come up. Come on, come on, cover them up. Tell you, right there, I'm saying, cover your ears. I say, it's the, it's the boy dogs because they're really cool. They think they're so cool. They're not that cool, but they think they are, right? So that's where you generally are going to run into a problem. You almost never run into a bitch. I mean, it happens, but you rarely. Well, okay, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not saying it's never happened, for God's sake, Lois. Come on. We, uh, they could be tough bitches. <laughs> Speaking as one, this can happen. Okay, if I was a bitch, my tail would be up over my back, I'm saying. So there you go. All right? So keep those things in mind. What we can control and what we don't have control over we have a lot more control over things than you really think we do. <laughs> you just have to understand what's your role in that partnership with your dog, right? Okay. All right. Now, here's a big question, and we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. <sighs> Can you make a sight hound care about being a show dog? Should we? Okay. Now, some of this is going to depend on whether you have a dog that needs ears. <laughs> okay. So my Ibethan hound, my Faro hound, my Basenji, my Ridgeback, they better like it. Right? Because, and, and like I have to train them to like it because I've got to get some expression. i got to have wrinkle or i got to have ears or i got to have whatever I need to have. And I'm not saying that our dogs should hate it. I'm saying, when I say, do they have to love being show dog, what I'm saying is, do we need to turn them into that proverbial Doberman, okay? That proverbial, generic show dog that makes my head spin off my body. I personally don't believe that we do. There are some breeds, yeah, yeah, yeah I needed ears on X, Y, or Z. But if I have a really, really beautiful, okay, I'm going to, 
I'm going to give you guys a picture. And a lot of you people here are been around long enough. I'm just looking around. A lot of you guys are going to remember this picture. So paint a picture with me. Pa close your eyes and paint a picture with me. Scottish Deerhound. Beautiful, just this magnificent outline. Kind of a, kind of a bigger dog. And Ray Brindley. Never saw Ray. From the other side of the ring, what'd you see? All you saw was the dog. He's got, yeah, he's got the hand up here, right? He's got this leash right here. He's kind of tugging it a little bit. He's got contact, but this is Ray. And he's kind of like, right? He's kind of down here like this. Do you guys remember seeing him? I do. It's exactly what he looked like. This is what Ray's body looked like. You never saw Ray. All you saw was this dog, okay? So there are ways to be a little bit dramatic or a little bit over dramatic, whatever, hey, Ray, um, <coughs> and, and showcase your dog in a way that is best for your dog and for your breed that doesn't involve the holy grail of catching cheese cubes. Okay, can I have an amen? Amen. All right. Because I think that's really important, and I think watching people, <coughs> watching people show dogs, sorry, watching people show dogs who are really good at it is so important. And I spent, from the time I was about 13 or 14 years old, at every dog show I could drag my mother to, sitting at the group ring, obsessing over my heroes. Okay, my gods were not Kobe Bryant or, or I don't know, musician, person, or whatever, right? My gods were in the show ring. My gods were the professional handlers. They were Andy Linton, and they were Deep Lee, and they were Taffy McFadden, and they were Don Rogers, and they were, th you know, these people that I watched every weekend who got every single ounce of blood out of the turnip, whatever the turnip might be. And guess what, you guys? They had 30 dogs they had to do that with. It was one, or maybe two, you know, whatevs. But I'm saying, you can do that, and there is absolutely no reason on God's little green earth that you can't. You can choose to not, but then you don't get to whine anymore, okay? That's what I'm saying. That's my, that's my throwdown to you people, all right? You choose not to do the work, don't whine to me. Do the work. And you, too, can make your dogs shine. Learn your dog. Know your dog. Know what's good about your dog, <coughs> what isn't good about your dog. Dear God, know that, too. And go show your dog, because that is what you're here for. You're not here to impress people. You're not here to get a ribbon. You're not here to be famous. You're here to have fun with your dog. Okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, questions? Yes, Warren? You've been so... <laughs> <laughs> That's an email. Okay. <laughs> Finito on the quietness. <laughs> Yes. I want to go back to the little dog. Yes, dear. I agree, you should float. Some of us don't float as well as we used to. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> funny, you'll notice I'm retired. Yeah. However, I have sort of broken loose and down with my dogs four different kinds of movement. I have a movement when the dog's going around with the other dogs in the ring. Mm -hmm. I have a movement when the dog's going around the ring by himself. I have a movement when the dog goes down, and a different movement when the dog comes back. And I think Laura makes a really good point. He's talking about um, the speeds that you move your dog at vary depending on what you're doing. And I think that goes back to what we're, we're talking, talking about, about. knowing your dog. So Warren knows his dog. He knows that if he goes too fast on the down and back, the dog's going to flail his hocks around. And if he goes too slow on the front, the dog's going to paddle. And if he goes too, you know, so this is about knowing your dog, gauging. I d I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm saying... <laughs> Warren, I am not picking on your dog. 
I'm saying that Warren knows what his dog's strengths and weaknesses are and has gauged the movement of his dog, timed it, had somebody watch him so that he knows what looks best and what looks worst, and he does it that way every time so as to accentuate the possibility that the judge is going to see the grandiosity of his exhibit. Okay, so what you see floating around in the backyard that looks stunning and amazing, <laughs> okay, if the judge doesn't see it, it doesn't do any good. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't. It can be the most stunning, the most gorgeous, big float, big lick, gorgeous dog floating around the backyard. If it scrabbles around the ring going, ah! I, I, what, I'm supposed to have osmosis? Okay? Train your dogs. Know what's good, know what's not good. Next. Do we have anybody from Facebook, Phil? All right. <laughs> Facebook Live. <coughs> Well, just don't call attention to the faults. <laughs> what I think would work is overemphasizing something. I personally hate it when somebody takes their chalupi and they want to show off their neck. Oh, yeah, d please, please. This is not an English cocker. Okay, this is same. We're going back to the same thing. We're not making our saluki into an English cocker or a cocker spaniel or an Irish setter. Show your dog correctly for its breed. Show what's beautiful about your dog for its breed. But I don't want to see that either. No, as a judge, no, I wouldn't want to see it. I'm like, no, leave it. Yeah. Beat them. And a little story about, you know, minimizing. Yes. I was showing on a bitch that I knew did not have the greatest friends in the world. And, and I was showing at a local show, uh, classic and bred by Breeder Dutch. And outstanding. It's almost a Breeder Dutch. And he sends my little bitch down and back. And as I'm coming back, he frowns. And he says, could you do that again? And I said, sure, why not? Like, down and back. She came back in again. And he says, would you do that another time? I said, it isn't going to get any better. That doesn't get any better. And so I think this is a really, oops, a really great point, and I want to emphasize it. And Warren, I will come back to you, I promise. But I have a, a matching story. So this is about know what's good and bad about your dog. Okay. So sometimes as professional handlers, we are occasionally guilty of not actually watching somebody else move the dog for us. We have a trusted client that brings us a dog. We're like, okay, great, no problem. Throw it on the truck. Off we go for eight shows or ten shows or whatever it is. And so I will not name the breed, <coughs> but I had this happen. Client gives me the dog. I'm like, this is great, no problem. Go off, great set of shows, a, a, a set of judges that I thought would appreciate this particular type of dog. Blah 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 blah. I get to like day three or four, and I haven't even gotten a reserve on this bitch. I'm thinking, <laughs> what in the world, right? So finally, one of these lovely human being judges called me over, and they're like, Laura, yeah. I said, have you watched it move? I'm like, no. He said. You need to do that. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, so then I went and watched it move and I was like, oh, oh, right? So, stupid me, I did. Done, which was make sure I knew what the dog was before I took it on the truck. But, you know, it's what happens. And so I did some things that, you know, very little I could do in this particular situation to try and, you know, minimize. <coughs> and I'm going through, and I'm into like day eight or ten, and I still I don't one reserve. <laughs> so finally, the last day of the of this particular set of shows, and another judge pulls me aside. I'm like, I, I know. I said I'm trying to fix it. He's like, honey, ain't nothing you can do. <laughs> okay then. And I sent the dog home. So <coughs> so the point of the exercise that I'm trying to explain to you is that you've got to know what you've got. And if you can or if you can't, fix it. And uh, this is the same for handlers or owner handlers. This isn't any different. It's not like we have some magic bullet, you know, that we take it into our bestie and they're like, dude, why are you showing me that? <laughs> because that's how it really works. Okay? 
Well, you were mentioning earlier that dogs don't understand English. They understand body language. Correct. Correct. Dogs, dogs understand, understand body, body language, language, not English. Yeah. Yes. In a way, um, we have to remember that the judges are dog people too. Study their body language. Okay. So if they tell you to go down and back again, they're not asking you to see the same thing right. again. Right. They're telling you to do it differently. Right. So do it, do it better, better, honey. Yeah, so if your dog is flipping in the corner <coughs> something, my recommendation is to take what I call the great circle route. Right. So you in, just yeah. circle around as the dog kind of falls sideways. The judge might like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, Warren makes a really great point that read what the judge is saying, and and this is a as a follow up to we talked about sign language and what we say with our hands. Watch what the judge says with their hands. The judge will tell you a great deal about what they are interested in seeing or finding with where they put their hands. Okay, if they put their hands here on the shoulders and they put their hands here, and there's this giant gaping hole that goes back to the vertebrae, and they put, okay, so watch where the judge puts their hands. Watch what interests them as they examine dogs prior to yours. A huge reason why you go and watch other breeds. Watch where the judge, they're not gonna change their exam. Where a judge puts their hands is where a judge puts their hands. When I come up to a dog, I go up under the chin, I wanna know about this head, I wanna see this expression, right? And then I'm going to kind of hold on to the ha head, and I'm going to go down, I'm going to do the shoulders, I'm going to the front. It's the same no matter what I'm judging. Okay? So the same applies for every judge. Watch where they put their hands. Watch what interests them. Watch what they place in another breed, and it's going to, oh, somebody's <laughs> going to throw up. Thanks, Bubba. Commentary. Um, so, so watch what they do. And what they are interested in, this is another perfect example. It is definitely not from Sighthounds, but it's a great <laughs> example. Uh, I had been asked to cover, um, what the heck was it? Uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And it was a judge from a foreign country that I had never laid eyes on. I had no clue what they wanted. So I'm like, all right. So I'm watching the dogs ahead, and I'm seeing that this judge is putting up all these heads. Heads, 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 heads. Everything was about the heads. Shoving the heads in the ring. Didn't care if it walked. Didn't care about anything. Wanted this particular head. Looking at the dog I got, I'm like, hey, I got this. Okay. So I have paid very careful attention to what everybody else is doing and what's been winning. And I've looked and I've examined my exhibit that I've barely met. And I said, okay, I feel like this has got, you know, some potential. So I go up there and I show the head. I don't care what these back feet are doing. I really don't care because neither does neither does the judge. All he wants to see is this head and expression. I'm like practically lying down in front of the dog, like trying to get some expression. Because that's all the judge cared about. He went winner's dog. He won the breed from the classes at a huge specialty because I gave the judge what the judge wanted to see. That is easy for anyone to do if you pay attention and if you watch. If you know what you have and you're able to identify places that yours is strong or weak compared to what the judge wants. Okay? Yes, Lois. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say this could be another Warren question. Yes, yes Lois. Lois. <laughs> I have an observation. But I've done this almost as long as Warren. And you were talking earlier about breed specific Yes, yes breed, breed specific, specific presentation. presentation. That that is much less emphasized than it used to be. And, and Lois's Lois observation is is much less emphasized than it used to be. Right, right, and, 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 and so, so this, this is a commentary, commentary yeah. about kind of, kind of today's, today's society. society. And I agree, an unfortunate commentary, and it's why we're sitting here having this conversation, you guys, because it isn't about judging generic show dogs that nail their free stacks and run around the ring really fast. I'm sorry, it's not. And we, as the breeders, as the people who care about our breeds, we're the ones who have to actually pay attention to that. We're the ones that have to breed, show, and preserve the breeds that we have been gifted. We are the curators of the purebred dog. And, and Lois, Lois's point is very well taken. It's very well taken. This is why we're having this conversation. 
because we are here to preserve the piece of history that is thousands of years old. It's our job. And if we try to turn this into a generic show dog, then we are no longer preserving that history. We are caretakers, we are curators of the purebred dog. Additional questions? Yes, ma'am. Observations? From the very first class, I expect you to have been watching. Yes. And I want you, I want you to know amen. what the pattern is. Can we have an amen? amen. Pay yes. attention. attention. My husband said that in order to be a dog show judge, you have to learn esoteric hand movements. <laughs> and you better know what those mean. I'm very clear in my instructions, but I still expect people to, to know what's been happening in the ring before. Right. Pay, pay attention to the patterns ahead of you. Your judge may grunt and, and fling his hand like this, but if you've watched other people who are more experienced do it, they'll know what that means, and then you do what they do. Okay? If you pay attention, come ahead of time. Don't come racing. I, I, God love you, Katie. I, I <laughs> One girlfriend that I traveled with that would like come racing in every single time, 30 seconds before her breed was called. I'm like, oh, made me crazy. Now for her, it worked. Didn't let her get nervous. Okay, fine, whatever, whatever. My recommendation is come early. <laughs> Pay attention, know what's happening. Give yourself and your dog a chance to chill out. Once again, calm, sight hound. excuse for not having watched something. And my other observation as a judge is um, follow what the judge asks you to do. Right. right. The judge has asked you to do something. Do what the judge asked you to do, not what you think you ought to. Do what the judge asked for because they asked for it for a specific reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. Unless emphasizes the bad Then you had better be creative about how you're avoiding showing off that image. <laughs> I was at the National one year, and uh, the judge, the foreign judge, asked us all to move our dogs at a moderate pace in the triangle, and one breeder, who shall remain nameless, <laughs> that's the right answer, like a bat out of hell, came into the judge, and the judge said, would you please do that again, but more slowly? And she did it exactly the same way that she had done it the first time. And the judge, you could just see it in her face. She just basically said, that's enough. I'm done. This right. dog is, I'm done with this dog. Right. She had good reason. Right. And, and so I think that's really, really important. The judges want to see a specific thing. Do what the judge has asked you to do. Okay. And, and be respectful. This is a sport where... And a single one of us here knows everything. Not even Warren. <laughs> He's just say, poor Warren. I'm picking on Warren. I'm sorry, Warren. <laughs> okay, so my point being that, okay, if you go in and, and you are disrespectful to your judge, you are unliable to be successful with your dog. Is that a polite and politically correct way to say that? In the back. Hang on, Phil. I'll get to Facebook. Okay. Oh my God. God. You're not showing the dog. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That. Right. No, she's making an awesome point, and this is actually in my notes, and I forgot to talk about it. One of the things that sighthound people love to do is run with their arm way up here, really, 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 really fast around the ring, like they're about to fall down. Please, just no, 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 stop, just stop, stop it, okay, stop it. It's not pretty. I know it looks pretty. You think it looks pretty? Doesn't look pretty. Okay, so the down and back. This was the the comment was about the down and back with your hand clear up here. You have no control. What did we just talk about? Contact. Stay in contact with your dog. There is no contact with your dog if you're running with your left hand over your head. Keep your hand down here. Right. Right. 
Right. What the heck are right. you right. doing? Right. 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 That'll be that. Right. right. So my hands back to hands. Right. Don't don't be up here. Keep your hand down here. Keep in contact with your dog. I mean, if you you know, I do raise my hand a little bit more with say a sighthound than I do with say a Saint Bernard. Okay. <laughs> Because I don't need to control quite as much body. I don't need to have quite as much contact. Okay? But the fact is, up here has got no contact. Unless you want to just run around the ring freestyle, stay in contact with your dog. Keep your hand a little bit lower. When you're doing the down and back, I encourage people to keep it attached to your hip. It's a great place height-wise. Keep your hand here. Keep your leash short and gathered up in your hand. Stay in contact with your dog on the collar. And then when you go to go around the ring, if you can let a little leash out, let him move out ahead of you just a little bit. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes, Warren. You have a name for that? For that? Please, Please let's not have it be someone's, someone's name. name. No, no. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I call it the chainsaw law. The, the chainsaw? chainsaw? Yeah, chainsaw law. Chainsaw, chainsaw law. law, okay. okay. I like I, that. That's actually genius, Warren. You just got a gold star, dude. Chainsaw law is when you're using a chainsaw, you never use it higher than your shoulders. Same applies to your leash. Your hand should definitely never be above your shoulder. Okay? <laughs> I like that. I'm dead serious. I, I'm totally stealing that. I'm, g I'm using it. This is going to be the new Warren Cook rule for chainsaw laws. Okay. No, no, Lois, no, you really don't, dude. I'm not tall either. I showed Irish wolfhounds that literally their heads were like, you know. Mm. Okay, next. Anybody else? Facebook land. Thank you, Jesus. Love this. Love this. Motivational tools that you use in a ring for sighthounds who are frequently not as food motivated. Um, and this is an amazingly great question. And again, one that I had sort of meant wanted to, to make a point on. So thank you. Um, I play games with them. Okay. The one that I showed, I had a bus and show feral hound. Okay. Thank God. The owners were fabulous. And they had taught him every trick in the book. And he shook hands. And he sat. And he downed. And he bowed. And I mean, he did everything. He was a feral hound. It was awesome. It was it was not Shauna, but it was at the same time as Shauna does a beautiful job with her dogs, the same thing. So sight hounds aren't necessarily all that food motivated. And so the question from, from Facebook land is, you know, what do you do with these dogs? Play with them. Interact with them. Once again, train them at home. Okay? I just, I <laughs> I, sorry, I did a podcast with a gal who trains Scottish deer hounds for obedience. She has five, five UDX deer hounds. Wow. All right, people here in Sighthound Land, if she can put five UDX deer hounds in this world, you can teach your dog to chase a cookie. <laughs> I feel it deep in my bones. Amen. Amen. So, thank you to Facebook Land. Yes, teach your dogs at home, train them, play with them, interact with them, give them a trick. Give them a release. Do not expect them to be on the entire time you're in the breed ring or the group ring. Give them a break. These guys don't have the duration of showmanship that a lot of other dogs do. They just don't. They want to turn off. You need to save what you've got. If you've got 30 seconds, if you've got two minutes, if you've got five minutes, know your dog. Know what you have. Use it wisely. Do not waste it when nobody's looking. All right, I spent a lot of years with a Glumber Spaniel lying under a towel in a corner. You get about that long. That's it. It's the same thing. Know what you've got, work with what you have, make the best of it, showcase it, and use it when you need it. Anybody else? Facebook land, going once, going twice. Peace out. <laughs>